We'll call to order the Tuesday, April 27th, Board of Supervisors. Please stand if you are able and join us in saying the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Due to the ongoing pandemic, we are continuing to offer uh, uh, meetings via Zoom, uh, which is allowed per code section 21.8.1. Uh, with that, is there a motion to adopt today's agenda, of which I will add, there is one correction under number nine. It says consideration of 2021 Economic Development Week proclamation of should be the May 9th through the 15th, not the 3rd through the 7th. I move approval of agenda with uh, the stated change. Okay. Then move, I'll second. Uh, Faisal? Aye. Edens? Aye. Motion approved. Um, next, we'll open up for public comment number one. This comment period is for the public to address topics on today's agenda. If there's anyone who would like to make public comment uh, for guests that are in the meeting room today can come up to the table or if you're on Zoom, please either raise your hand or click star nine to unmute yourself. Not seeing anyone. Okay, not seeing anyone, so I will close public comment number one. Uh, then we'll move on. We have a recognition of Ron Gemlin for his 15 years of service. Um, Ron, we do want to thank you for all that you have done for Story County over these past 15 years. I do have a plaque here that reads in appreciation, in appreciation of your 15 years of leadership, dedication, and service to the citizens of Story County. 20, 2005 to 2021, and just appreciate really all that you've done to keep our buildings and our grounds and everything running smoothly here. Um, certainly could not uh, do it. It's a, I know it's a team effort, but uh, yeah. certainly appreciate all the dedication that you've given to Story County. Well, it's been a good time. It's good. To, uh, a lot of people, good people work with us. Well, thank you. Well, thank you very yes. much. We have a plaque for you and a card. And did we want to do a picture? Do you want to do a picture? Yeah. All right. I'll do that. And the card, and actually, here. Okay. Black and one. Are you ready for that? You're going out with a bang, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> You're like, this is this is the year. I'm done. <laughs> Did you, you want to get, get those two and then do all of us? Yeah, I'll do these two. Yeah. Okay. Count three. One, two, three. Okay. You want to come down here? Is that yeah. easier? Watch the cords. I'll try and get it. Because Grace will easily be the one that. Okay. Okay. Next, we'll go on. We have two recognitions this week. Um, the first one is the Public Service Recognition Week. Um, so I'll start reading that, and Supervisor Faisal will join me in, in this as well. Public Service Recognition Week. In honor of millions of public employees at the federal, state, county, and city levels. Whereas Americans are served every single day by public servants at the federal, state, and county, and city levels. These unsung heroes do the work that keep our nation working. And whereas public employees take not only jobs, but oaths and 
whereas many public servants, including military personnel, police officers, firefighters, border patrol officers, embassy employees, healthcare professionals, and others risk their lives each day in service to the people of the United States and around the world. And whereas public servants include teachers, doctors, and scientists, train conductors, and astronauts, nurses and safety inspectors, laborers, computer technicians, and social workers, and countless other occupations. Day in and day out, they provide the diverse services demanded by the American people of their government with efficiency and integrity. And whereas without these public servants at every level, continuity would be impossible in a democracy that regularly changes its leaders and elected officials. Now, therefore, be it resolved that we, the Story County Board of Supervisors, Story County, Iowa, do hereby announce and proclaim to all citizens and set seal hereto that May 2nd through 8th, 2021 is Public Service Recognition Week. All citizens are encouraged to recognize the accomplishments and contributions of government employees at all levels, federal, state, county, and city. Thank you. Is there a motion to approve the proclamation? So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Basil? Aye. Hedden? Aye. Motion approved. I just want to say um, a comment is um, uh, congratulations to all in recognizing Public Service Week. Um, certainly um, all that you offer and all that you do for the citizens within our county, within our state is greatly appreciated um, and needs to be recognized um, for all the contributions that you provide. So thank you for your service. Yes, I, I, I second that and, and just say that I'm, I'm glad that it that it um, speaks to how important um, everyone who works in government all the time is to making sure that elected officials know um, what they need to know and support that work. So thank you to everyone. Uh, next, we have another proclamation and this is um, for uh, Economic Development Week proclamation. And Supervisor Basil, do you want to start this one out? Thank you, but I'm going to just take the big mask off a little bit because it's hard for me to breathe for some reason. Um, 2021 Economic Development Week proclamation. Whereas economic development professionals are engaged in a wide variety of settings, including rural and urban, local, state, and federal governments, public private partnerships, chambers of commerce, and universities helping to create and expand jobs that facilitate growth in these regions. And whereas the creation of new opportunities for businesses and entrepreneurs is one of several key components to securing Story County economic future for generations to come. And whereas Story County is committed to fostering a business friendly climate that will attract and retain employers, enable the community to grow and remain competitive on a global scale and generate new jobs and opportunities for our citizens. And whereas the Ames Economic Development Commission is committed to providing quality resources that boost economic growth and enhance quality of life throughout Story County. Therefore, we, the Story County Supervisors, do hereby proclaim May 9th, 2021 through May 15th, 2021 is Economic Development Week in appreciation of all our partners in the economic development field do do to make the Story County the vibrant and thriving community it is today. Uh, is there a motion to approve the proclamation? I move we approve the proclamation. Then move a second. Uh, Basil? Aye. Evans, aye. It is approved. And congratulations to everyone that's on the line with the chamber um, and other uh, locales that support economic development. Certainly appreciate all the work that you do within the city and throughout the county and the region. Thank you so much. Next, going on with the agenda, we have agency reports. Uh, we have Heartland Senior Services. I'm not sure if Nancy Carroll is on the line or, yep, I see her. Good morning, Nancy. Good morning. So we do have your um, your report that you've submitted to us and just wondering if there are items that you would like to further highlight. 
Just <clears throat> just a couple really quick. I want to thank, first of all, on behalf of our board of directors and our staff, we want to thank the board of supervisors. You know, you're participating at a level financially about on average $100,000 a year. That is huge to Heartland Senior Services. And I would, I would suggest, and I hope the report captures that, that during normal times, you know, we're serving um, with your dollars about over close to 300 um, non Ames residents, which I think is very important because they're coming from 13 other communities throughout our county. And then yes, when you wrap in the Ames residents, of course, of, of the county, that's almost another 860 people. So good investment, we hope, of your dollars in the areas of, of activities, adult day center, our outreach program, and of course, Meals on Wheels and Nutrition. Um, we have, of course, as everyone has, basically been closed over a year now, starting last March. But the good news is to celebrate, we're, we're anticipating reopening now in June. And what we're asking um, is that all the seniors that want to return to our physical building, they just need to show us their vaccination card and then we're, we're, we're ready to go. So we're very, needless to say, excited. The, the seniors, as we all understand throughout all of, the, all of society, you know, social, net, social isolation has probably been as hard on them as, as anything. So we, we wanna get them back and, and get active and get going. Lastly, I'll just touch upon that before COVID struck, we were really in the throes of trying again to still figure out how to get a new facility. So we put that on pause for a little bit during, during the pandemic, but now our board and staff have really, uh, with energy, started this last couple of months to address getting a new facility. I'll remind you that during the Healthy Life Center um, project proposal, Heartland raised, and we have in the bank, roughly $3.3 million. So we can aggressively get started now in saying we want to get a new facility and and hopefully within the next few years, turn earth and actually have a ribbon cutting for groundbreaking. So I'll just answer any questions, but again, I really want to express uh, our appreciation for your funding. It's, it's instrumental in keeping Heartland moving forward. Oh, great, thanks, Nancy. Well, you answered my one question, which was when you were looking at anticipating reopening. So um, that's great. Are you looking at having all the activities um, you know, available, or are you going to kind of gradually start things up? Yeah, gradually. You know, we're not going to go yet with our off-site activities. So as an example, one of our biggest um, intergenerational activities is, is trivia, and it's intergenerational, and it's held quarterly. And we have close to 175 people of all ages that come out and we meet at City Church in Ames. We're not doing that yet. Um, or Moose Lodge dances where we have probably 50 to 75 people attend from, from even more than just Story County. We're not doing that yet. We're just gonna start with adult day and activities within our building because we think that's the safest way to just kind of gingerly get going again. That was my main question. Supervisor Fable, did you have any questions? Um, I was just wondering what, what types of changes you made to um, programming that you expect to continue um, as you reopen. Like were, were there new ways of doing things that you identified that you plan to continue? Yeah, great question, thank you. Um, one of the programs, RSVP, Retired and Senior Volunteer Program, we just this last few months with Kaylin Peterson's uh, leadership, we've started now a grocery delivery program for seniors. And also for anyone disabled that would be under 60 years old. And so Heartland, since we serve the older adults throughout the county, we are the ones trying to educate and inform people. RSVP is coordinating the volunteers, not only to help seniors go online and or use a smartphone if they don't have one, whatever. The volunteers will do that for them to help more of the groceries. They'll go to the store, pick them up. And if need be, actually bring them into the home in a safe way and put them in their, their cupboards. So that was something that we decided just because of the pandemic, we saw when Meals on Wheels, as my report reflected, went from 125 a day to 200 a day, and that's continued. 
um, we decided, you know what, seniors are even still cautious about going out to the grocery store or they just don't have the ability to do it. And what's really encouraging is that Fairway, Hy-Vee, Aldi's and Walmart are all participating and Fairway's really great since there's one in Nevada and Huxley and RSVP will coordinate volunteers for Zering, McCallsburg, all of those smaller outlying communities for grocery delivery. So I'm really glad you asked that question because I wrote the report before we got that program finalized. So that is central, I think, to a lot of provide, making sure people are well fed um, and have access to, to meals. That, that's great. I'm glad, I'm glad to hear that, um, that the, some of the smaller communities are included in that because um, that was going to be my next question was if the volunteers were going out to some of those smaller communities. Um, so that, that's great. That's great. Yes. I volunteered one year in the day, um, the day program, and it was fantastic um, and, and so important. So thank you for well, providing that service as well. It, it's huge, folks, and, and we all know it, especially if you've seen it in person. But I think all of us would, if we had asked who knows someone that has or is struggling currently with dementia, Parkinson's, whatever, almost half of the room raises their hand. So the adult day center is central to those services and the poor caregivers have really been struggling during this time. One thing we did do, we did do Zoom every week with our caregivers and our adult day center participants. So that was huge to try to stay connected and, and, uh, and they're coming from all over the county. Not obviously as many as, as from Ames, but still, um, I will always encourage anything you all can continue to do um, for transportation, that would be celebrated because that still is a limiting factor to getting some of the folks from the smaller communities in Story County actively involved in our adult day center in particular. Have you met Nancy with um, HERDA at all? Because I know that they are trying to do more outreach to identify folks that would meet HERDA or dial ride um, criteria. Oh. Yes, over, over many times we've met with HERDA. More recently, I mean, like within the last six weeks, I met with um, um, Barb Neal, director of SciRide. And so the encouragement and the, the kind of the awareness that they presented to us is that, that Heartland should start really going with dial of ride That is the contracted service of SciRide City of Ames to HERDA, but it comes with way better uh, service requirements that SciRide is putting on HERDA to be more uh, responsive to the clientele we serve. Right. I think the one thing we need is for folks to then sign up for the dial ride. They just need to complete the paperwork for that. So, yes. talking with Brooke, Brooke Ramsey or Julia, um, and anything you can do to help facilitate that, I think would be helpful. Well, and maybe yes. maybe part of RSVP. I'm just throwing this out there, is maybe when they're delivering, they could also help someone complete the paperwork. Yeah, and we're offering that. And, and SciRide to that end was doing a brand new brochure with a simplified application form. So once that new brochure was completed, we're gonna direct mail that to all of our folks. We're gonna tell them we will support them in filling out the application and just highly educating more around do dial -a ride Those are the key words when the senior calls in as we understand it. Good, great. Thank great. you all. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a good rest of your day. Oh, thanks. Again, I really appreciate your support. You bet. Next, we'll go on. We have the AEDC quarterly report, and I'm not sure if that's going to be Nick and Brenda. Yeah, good morning, Nick and Brenda. And um, we do have your report as well that we've read through. So I'm just seeing if there's areas that you'd like to highlight on your report for us this morning. So um, I'll start uh, again. Uh, thanks for your continued support of our workforce solutions program of work more so than ever. Uh, seems like we have the extremes where we have a lot of businesses looking for people. Uh, we've our experience, continued experience higher than expected unemployment. So we're at 3% uh, over 2% last year. Um, so the importance of having a job board that has far reaching efforts to support the job seeker and the employer is, is important. And so 
in, in our report, I highlighted that we surpassed already 100,000 searches on the job board. And we traditionally, if we hit 200,000 by the end of the year, that's great. And so to hit 50% uh, of that goal in April tells me that we have a lot of people that are out there, they're looking for work. I want to talk a little bit as well about our retraining efforts. I know that that's something that the supervisors have been keenly interested in. And so we are in the midst of another welding class and another nursing uh, CNA class. And so those folks will graduate uh, early to mid-May uh, and that will again, put some additional folks into the workforce that maybe were working in the service sector were underemployed before. And so we're gonna be doing um, the networking exercises with, uh, with the uh, medical providers that hire CNAs in May, and then we'll turn around and do that again with the welding candidates uh, before the end of May. So um, things focus there. I'd sure uh, take any questions you might have on the information included in on the report. We're getting ready for summer. We're gonna do a hybrid See Yourself in Ames, and we're excited about that. We've added a diversity, equity, and inclusion event outside at Ryman Gardens that uh, it's got a lot of energy to it as well. And so um, we're looking forward to, uh, to a lot of things going on on the workforce front. Any questions for me? Um, one question I have for you, Brenda, is on the, the training programs, um, are you able to figure out the transportation? So, um, you know, uh, that has been a struggle. And so um, actually what we've been able to do is uh, we've been able to do some ride sharing with the existing participants. And, um, you know, it's a challenge. Uh, uh, it's a fluid situation on transportation. We know that and it's hard to have a lot of advance notice. Uh, but um, we've actually been able to deal with the folks that weren't able to share a ride actually with Uber gift cards. And that seems to be working really well. Um, the, the coordination and scheduling of that then falls on the candidates. So, um, but uh, again, um, it is a challenge and I would echo a lot of the same things that Nancy mentioned on that. And uh, we're continuing to work through that. And uh, when we can provide quite a bit of notice, HERDA has been able to be supportive, um, but uh, we're, we're figuring it out. So thank you for asking, Supervisor Heddens. Thanks for that update. Um, as, I have a, a, a follow-up question. Um, how was your, what were your registration numbers compared to the first time that you ran the programs? Um, they are lower. Um, but um, as things have gotten started, we, we're gonna have to turn around and offer two more CNA classes. So um, it, it's just interesting. Um, CNA has to be offered uh, during the DMAC calendar. And so that, that makes for a little bit more interesting cutoff on timing, but we anticipate offering both a CNA class that would complement each other in terms of time uh, here in Ames and in Boone. And so um, we'll be doing uh, CNA. We're actually gonna be doing some upskill training with maintenance technicians, but we are struggling to get people to sign up for manufacturing. And, and we're gonna continue to try to push those opportunities. We have a large number of job openings there. Um, so we'll continue to try to figure out how do we get people signed up and in those classes, there's high wages in those professions. And, uh, and so um, we're hoping, still optimistic, we can get manufacturing offered this summer, but we've got a nice class going through welding and feel really good about our ability to place them when they get out of the class. Thanks, great, thank you. Okay, I'll give uh, just a quick update on my side of things. And again, thank you for uh, your support with the proclamation today as well. Uh, you see my notes there from across the county. Every single community is actively working on trying to better their situation. So I'm, I'm greatly appreciative of that when, I, when I'm coming into those communities. But one thing I wanted to touch on is the housing study. So we are 
waiting to get that back, the finalized product. We kind of sent that back and said, hey, we want some more details um, about the smaller communities. Uh, we anticipate to see that back either this week or next week. Once we get that back, um, we're going to break it out and do a presentation with each community. And working with you, uh, I believe you had indicated the Board of Supervisors would like to attend, if not uh, assist in those presentations. And I think that's absolutely fantastic. So look for me to be reaching out to you in the next month to say, all right, let's go to McCallsburg, let's go to Kelly, let's go to Slater, and let's talk housing because, uh, you know, with the cost of construction the way it is right now, it is inflating very, very fast. So to be able to, to move quickly before it gets out of hand, um, which it already has, but uh, to move quickly is going to be important. So that's really the main thing I wanted to touch on today. Do you have any questions for me? I don't have any questions. I will just make a comment as I was just reading the, of the, today and actually saw an article the other day about the cost of construction uh, going up, that the supply chain has been interrupted and that has been a huge driver um, in that. Um, so hopefully that will get kind of addressed sooner rather than later um, so that houses can be more affordable because that's what's going to drive up making them unaffordable for some folks is the, is the relative cost. Absolutely. And, and what you'll see now is the existing housing stock uh, just will be non-existent. Um, people will hold on to their homes, won't look to build. Um, so to be able to move into uh, our county is going to prove to be even more difficult. Now, you do have your, your communities like Huxley and Gilbert and the Story City that have consistent growth throughout time. Um, but I think we'll see that slow down a little bit with cost of construction. So anything we can do to, to keep us in the upward trajectory is, is going to be important. I'm guessing that rehabbing is going to become even more important. Rehabbing older buildings and older homes and um, making those available. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to going, going uh, to some of those communities with you, Nick. I think that's going to be... Um, great and good conversations. So thank you. Absolutely. Yes. And, and you did hit the nail on the head there. You know, the owner occupied rehabs are going to be more important and adaptive reuse. Um, there's some grants coming out from the state for upper story living in downtown buildings that uh, uh, developers can utilize to underutilize space to turn it into housing that used to be housing. It was just back in the 50s and 40s. So re-engaging that space. That's going to be important. So look forward to, to doing this with you all. Great. I don't have any additional questions either. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you both for joining us this morning. Enjoy the Thanks. rest of your day. Thank you. Okay. Next we'll move on to consideration of minutes. Is there a motion to approve the four 2021 minutes? I move we approve the four 2021 minutes. Kyle second. Basil? Aye. Kevin? Aye. Motion approved. Next is consideration of personnel actions. I move we approve the personnel actions as presented. Second. Moved by Basil. Basil? Aye. Kevin? Aye. Motion approved. Next is consideration of claims. I move approval of claims as presented. Now second. Basil? Aye. Kevin? Aye. Claims are approved. Next, we are on to consent agenda. Anything being pulled from consent? No? Okay, I don't have anything either. Is there a motion to approve? Um, move, we approve the consent agenda. All second, Basil? Aye. Heavens, aye. Motion is approved. Uh, moving on, we have no public hearing items. So we now go on to additional items. Um, first is the consideration of the 2021 budget amendment. Good morning, Lisa. Good morning. How are you guys? Oh, I got the wrong chair. I need the roller. <clears throat> I provided you with the documentation of the um, official notice that will go in the paper, which overall shows a uh, revenue increase of about 1.8% from 8% from the previously amended budget and an expense decrease of 1.19 from the previous amended budget. <clears throat> It also provides us with 
um, I'll, I'll talk about it in fund balances in a minute. I gave you the documentation for all the departments for their expenses and their revenues. Uh, understand that when we first uh, approved the FY21 budget, we only budgeted 95% for salaries. So a lot of the salary adjustments are because we only budgeted 95% for salaries. Um, and the insurance is always a guess because we don't know how many are going to take it. We don't know how many are going to take the family versus the non or the single. Um, so a lot of the departments are actually um, adjusting the insurance needs down, um, which is, is good. That ends up in the ending fund balance for us. So I have um, provided also the ending statement of change in fund balances, which tells you what the ending fund balances are proposed, and those are looking um, nice <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. Uh, general and general supplemental at 29%. Um, mental health fund, that's not even a conversation because it doesn't matter what that is really to us. <laughs> um, rural services fund is coming in at 38%, and the uh, uh, secondary roads fund is coming in at 33%. We still have our um, <clears throat> funds that are assigned and committed. So any questions on this or any problem with me sending it to publication for public hearing on April or on May 25th? I don't have any questions for you. I think it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, give a nice overview when you come and present to us. Yeah. Um, yeah, the, the, the code states that we have to amend the budget before, or so that there are 30 days um, in case there, 30 days before the end of the fiscal year in case someone wants to um, challenge our budget. So yeah. that's why we're doing it at the end of May. Okay. Sounds great. Good. Thank you. All right. Is there a motion to approve sending the fiscal year 2021 budget amendment for public hearing on May 25th, 2021? So moved. Second, Basil? Aye. Pedans? Aye. Motion approved. Uh, next is consideration of authorizing one full-time watershed coordinator position within conservation. Um, I saw that Mike was on. Good morning. Can you hear me? We can. Good morning, Good morning. Mike. Good morning. Um, this morning, I'm asking for your authorization to move forward with uh, approving the watershed coordinator position. Um, you're familiar with the discussions and the rationale for the position. It was in the, uh, it is included in the FY22 budget. Uh, we've had uh, discussions at the at budget work sessions and, and at other times regarding this position. So um, appreciate your support through the budgeting process. Um, uh, we would like to be able to uh, advertise this position now so that we can have someone um, someone uh, hired by the beginning of the fiscal year. So um, I know there's been a, a fair amount of discussion about the position. The, you know that the, um, the county's watershed assessment working group is, is uh, supportive of the position and uh, they, this position will take um, direction from them and supervision from the conservation director. So, um, at the time, I think probably of our budget work sessions, we didn't know where this person would, uh, uh, where we would house the office, but uh, it's been decided that we would put that position in, uh, in the administration building. Um, oh, down across the hall, where Todd's office is, near there, um, where across the hall from planning and development and environmental health. So um, that's where the position to go. And I think that that's a nice spot because of, there's going to be so many people there in administration building that this person's going to work with directly. So with that, um, I, uh, um, urge you to authorize the position. Do you have any questions? Um, I just have one question for you, Mike. So your plan is not to have someone onboarded within this fiscal year. Is your hope is to have them start at least by July 1? For the next fiscal year, am I correct on that? Correct. Yeah, July one start. Um, there won't be any. Uh, we won't ask them to start in this fiscal year. Thanks. And my only question was where, where in the admin building? Um, so you already answered that. Uh, thanks, Mike. Yep. 
Any other questions? Alyssa, did you have any comments? No. Okay. So is there a motion to authorize the one time one full time watershed coordinator position within conservation to be filled within fiscal year twenty twenty two? So moved. Second. Basil? Aye. Heavens? Aye. Motion approved. Great. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. Looks like we have actually Mike one more time. Uh, this is consideration of agreement with JEO Consulting Group for the headwaters of the South Skunk River Watershed Management Authority Assessment. Yes, and thank you. Um, this you may recall that uh, we are acting as fiscal agent for the headwaters um, WMA. Um, you recall that we applied for a grant with uh, the, the Department of Natural Resources to do a watershed assessment. Uh, with the headwaters and um, we were successful in, in getting that grant. So we have um, signed a grant agreement with the DNR. Um, now the first step in that is to uh, uh, secure the services of a consulting firm. Uh, we did issued an RFP uh, for consulting and, and had five firms respond to that. Uh, we have the WMA has established a technical team and that technical team has reviewed those uh, proposals, um, A, through a preliminary rating process, and then B, through uh, interviews with the top two scoring firms. Um, that technical team has made a uh, recommendation to the Watershed Management Authority to move forward with an award to JEO. Uh, the WMA then approved that and uh, henceforth is asking that, that uh, the Board of Supervisors today approve that, uh, and then the county would enter into an agreement with JEO. Um, I know this seems a little bit um, out of the ordinary. We don't do things like this every day, but, but it's because the, the WMA doesn't have any uh, contracting or fiscal management authority. Hence, um, they've delegated that to uh, Story County to act on their behalf in this regard. So um, today what we're asking for then is the county to, um, to authorize or to enter into this contract uh, with JEO. Any questions about that? I don't know. Um, just, just out of curiosity, um, the technical team, what, um, what are the skills that those people bring? Yeah, so it's a good question, Latif. It's it's a uh, uh, I guess it it there's nine individuals on that committee. Um, some of them are representatives from different um, member jurisdictions, i.e., the city of Ames, um, uh, Story City, um, Story Soil and Water Conservation District. Uh, and then there's some, there's also some folks from, uh, with water quality expertises from um, Iowa State University, um, from the Center for Rural Affairs is another one. And so we, we try to, to get a broad based um, professional, uh, uh, if you will, skill set on the technical team. This is a group that's going to be working with the consultants most directly throughout this 18 month process to uh, get the assessment done. We may well add to that technical team as time goes by, um, but at, at the uh, moment, I've been really pleased with the amount of energy that the technical team has put into it, the amount of detail uh, and the thought process in, in uh, scoring, rating these applications and really having a good, a good vetting process. So it's been, uh, it's been in, A, encouraging uh, to uh, work with this uh, this group and and uh, in, and also encouraging in the fact that there is so much expertise um, within this group. So um, really pleased to be able to uh, to have these members on. Thank you, Mike. Yep. Is there a motion to approve the agreement with the JEO consulting group for the headwaters of the South Stump Watershed Management Authority Watershed Assessment? So moved. Second. Basil? Aye. Kevin? Aye. Motion approved. Thank you, Mike. Thank you.
Yep. Up next is the discussion and consideration of revised temporary employment practices policies in response to COVID. Good morning, Alyssa. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, so I have done just a couple revisions to this temporary policy. Um, as of April 30th, our COVID leave, it does expire. Um, the board did approve extending it through the end of April. Um, so I did reflect that in this. And then also there, there have been some updated guidelines from the CDC in regards to isolation and travel now that, that um, individuals have been vaccinated. So I did um, just kind of revise that section kind of left it as just as recommended by the CDC. As we as we all know, those those guidelines do change um, periodically. So instead of putting the specific guidelines in the policy, we just, we'll just refer to the guidance from the CDC or the Iowa Department of Public Health when those situations arise. No, I think that's good um, on it. And you're right, things are a little still continue to be a bit fluid with what's yeah. going on. I know that there's supposed to be some new guidance coming out today as well, I yep. believe on face covering. Yep. That's what I heard. I haven't seen anything yet. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't seen anything either, um, but it's certainly, however we can keep it open. Yep. So we're, you're not having to come before us I know. every time. <laughs> yeah, eventually we'll be done revising this. Right. Probably, so. Yeah, I don't have any. No, one, no questions? No. Okay. And, and I will send something out, just notifying employees that, that they can use that COVID leave through April 30th, but as of May 1st, it would transition to regular sick leave if needed. So okay, that's good. Okay, great. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Is there a motion to approve the revised temporary employment practices and policies in, in response to the COVID nineteen pandemic? So moved. And second. Basil. Aye. Evans. Aye. Motion is approved. Uh, next is discussion and consideration of resolution 21-84 it's the verbio nevada llc and the chicago northwestern transportation company voluntary annexation petition good morning amelia good morning good morning i provided a memo on the agenda center i'm just going to give a brief overview um and then i because i'm up here in person i also brought copies of the maps in the memo if you need um so just let me know thanks yeah, so this project I think began last summer. Um, Verbio is interested in creating a rail yard on some property to the northwest of their current location across 590th Avenue. Um, there was a previous annexation request last year that included the railroad um, up to the east of 590th as a connector to the city of Nevada for this new site because the, the Verbio site doesn't actually have any portion that's adjacent to the city of Nevada. Um, with the previous annexation request, the railroad was in, being involuntarily annexed and that request was not successful. And so there's now a request before us where the railroad is voluntarily participating and petitioning for annexation as is Verbio. So it's a completely voluntary request. Um, Previously, last year, you know, state code on annexations is a little bit funky. Um, it's not real clear on what process we're to follow. Um, we had previously interpreted that when an annexation was within two miles of another city, the county did not need to take action. So that's why that request did not come before you. I recently um, sat down with Ethan Anderson from the county attorney's office and went through this section of state code just to make sure we are following the right procedure. So now I, I do want to bring this before you for action and do intend to bring annexations um, before you that are within two miles of another city. Um, that other city will also, you know, typically act as well. Um, and so that's why the request is before you versus the other one was not. Um, I, I think with this request, Ames is the city within two miles. It's adjacent to the city of Ames, the Verbio site is. Um, they waived a 2080 agreement they have with Nevada in December of last year to allow this annexation. Um, and then we also are to look at state code. Um, state code says we're to look at how this conforms with our comprehensive plan. And so the comprehensive plan in this area is both the Ames Urban Fringe Plan and our C2C plan. Both of these plans have different land use designations. 
And for each land use designation, there's policies and principles about how they're to develop. Um, with the designations these properties are in, we would typically see an amendment to a different designation prior to annexation. Um, so these designations, the, the railroad property is, um, I believe, Ag Farm Service. That's property that's generally not, um, there's not a policy that's to be annexed. You know, it's to remain in more of a rural character. And similarly, the Verbio property, even though it aims way to the 2080 agreement regarding annexations, it's still in the Ames Urban Fringe Plan and designate it in um, a land use class that's not an urban service area and only urban service areas should be annexed if we're following the Ames Urban Fringe Plan. Um, so given all this and that we did not take action on the previous annexation request um, and that Ames has taken action as a city within two miles to waive um, their agreement with Nevada to allow an annexation, staff's recommending that the Board of Supervisors take no position for or against this annexation. Um, state code does allow us to take a position of support or against or essentially take no position. Um, and that will be forwarded on um, to the City Development Board um, to review with the city's request. We also, just as a courtesy, always send notice, we don't have to, to property owners within a quarter mile of the request. Um, that did result in one phone call I received um, from, uh, there was a concern about how this would create, um, how this might impact Lincoln Way Energy. Um, and I believe that that person was opposed to the annexation request, um, just from a, a, a business competition standpoint. Um, so I wanted to make you aware of that. And then I also looked into the last time we um, took no position on an annexation request, and that was the Iron Bridge annexation. It's north of Huxley. Um, that annexation was a subdivision that had originally come to the county that we could not support, but the city of Huxley was interested in annexing it. Um, and I believe it was designated as a natural area on our, on our, on our um, C2C plan. And so I think we took no position on that one. Um, and that one was approved though by the city development board. So just for some information on how this could impact the request. Um, do you have any questions? For me, again, I, we're recommending taking no position, just given, given the complicated history of this request. Um, I did prepare a separate resolution um, that you could support the request. I, I do have a question. So in your um, conversation with Ethan Anderson, yeah. you established that we, we need to take action? Well, you so we established that you can on these types of annexations within two miles of another city. Okay. But state code does also say that if the Board of Supervisors does not take action, then it doesn't impact. So you could also take no action versus no position. Um, so that's why you've got it on here. We're allowed to do either one, support the position or take no position. Yes, yes. Um, and then the, I guess the third option would be um, taking a position against the annexation. I didn't prepare a resolution for that. And then the fourth option under state code is kind of what we did with the previous request, which is it was not on your agenda. There was no action whatsoever taken, and that doesn't impact the annexation request either. And I talked to Ethan back in um, December or January when this came to my attention. So if the, I'm just going to throw out, if the board would take a no position position, as you're mm -hmm. recommending, then what occurs next? Yep, we will send a copy of the resolution to the city of Nevada to include with their um, annexation petitions to the city development board as part of those materials. You know, I, I'm not sure how big of an impact it would have on the city development board's consideration, given that I think in the past we've taken no position and the annexations have still been approved. Um, it might be more of a procedural gotcha. step. Okay. Any other questions? Um, it might not be related at all, but the, the fact that the two 
the areas are um, in the Ames Urban Fringe and Nevada's plan. Um, are there are there going to be any issues that they're that they don't match up? Not once. Well, I think once annexed, the city of Nevada will have to go through their processes to establish what um, land use designation they are in the city's comprehensive plan and zoning designation. Um, they will need to likely rezone the properties, I guess, once they come into the city. Most of the time with cities, properties would come in as an undesignated zoning district or agricultural zoning district, and then the city has to initiate a rezoning. And at that point, you know, best practice would be to amend the comprehensive plan to match the zoning at that point. Here, mm -hmm. um, and I, John Hall is the applicant. I don't know if he's still on or has anything to add. Hi, John. Good morning, board. Uh, I, I really don't have anything to add. I think Amelia did a, a great job. Um, uh, Latifa, I believe you had the question regarding the uh, the um, comprehensive plan that the county has. And, and Amelia and I have actually talked about that more broadly for this, this area, uh, just going back after this and, and ensuring that um, we look at if, if a comprehensive plan update needs to be done to, to be more reflective of what Nevada sees as growth in through this area. Uh, we want to be proactive about that so that we're uh, less reactive as business and industry uh, hopefully grows up in this area. Thanks, John. Thank you. I don't have any other questions. Do you have anything else to add? No, and just to clarify, um, what John is talking about is thinking about the areas that, if this annexation is successful, are still outside the city's boundaries. What the future of those areas look like, given this development. So then we would be also looking at uh, amending our CTC, like making changes in. Yes, I, that well. came up in the annexation consultation meeting. I think Nevada is looking at amending their comprehensive plan uh -huh. soon, um, and so a lot of times they look at growth scenarios. Um, as part of that, but we could also, you know, work with John to initiate a, just a review of their urban growth area in the near future, given this change. Gotcha. Yep, we just want to make sure that everything's aligned. When do conversations about um, conservation and um, environmental concerns and mm -hmm. updating um, plans to ensure that the, that's part of the conversation, when does when does that usually happen? That would typically happen after annexation, you know, when the city is doing the rezoning and then the site plan for the site. So for instance, if this was not being annexed and was in the county, um, we have standards for environmental protection as part of our rezoning standards that we need to look at. And then we also have general site planning standards when they'd submit their plans for how to develop the site on you know, how much natural resource area you can protect, stormwater management, erosion control. Um, so I, I would assume the city has a similar code once annexed for those types of reviews. Did you have a concern about a specific resource on site? No, okay. I do not. No, okay. no, I just want, I just um, want to make sure that I know when those conversations yeah. happen. Um, because, yeah, because I want, I want to make sure, sure that. Um, okay. That I know. Absolutely. That's happening. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Any additional questions, comments? Thank you. Um, is there a motion? Um, I would move um, approval of resolution 2184, taking the board taking no position on annexation. Okay. I will second that. Any further discussion? Basil? Aye. Kevin? Aye. Motion is approved. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next we have up is Animal Control Quarterly Report. Hi, Anna. Oh, there we go. Yep. Hello. And we have your report as well. So do you want to highlight some things or add anything additional? Sure, um, I'll highlight some things. Um, so first off, 
During the last quarter, we had 59 intakes of both cats and dogs and one pig. We did adopt out 68 animals and transferred 19 other animals to um, other animal rescues or shelters. We also had eight dogs and two cats return to their owners. Um, the colder months are typically slower than the rest of the year and we had 32 animal control calls. And these consisted of mostly stray animal reports and animal complaints. And then, um, as you know, on one of the coldest days of the year brought us a stray pig we named Odie. Uh, Odie was able to stay in our barn for a 30 day quarantine and then was transferred to an animal sanctuary in Northeast Iowa. And we are actually hoping to visit Hercules Haven and Odie in the future. Um, shelter staff really enjoyed taking care of her throughout her stay with us. And she, and after she was feeling better, her personality really shined through and, and we really enjoyed that time. Another highlight here at the shelter is the completion of some much needed landscaping in our outdoor dog runs. This really helps with the cleanliness of the pens and the dogs while outside. And something that our department is really proud of is our average daily animal count went from 115 animals in January to about 67 animals now. Uh, this is just in time for kitten season. <laughs> so just, just like our kitten intakes will increase over the coming months, we expect an increase in animal control calls as well. And uh, any questions for me? I don't have a question. I do have a comment is I really like seeing the promotions that you've been doing with your kind of daily or weekly animals of the week. Um, I'm assuming that that has helped with furthering with your adoptions um, uh, because I'm seeing it all the time. I believe it is helping get our animals adopted and out there. There's a lot of competition um, in now with animal rescues across the state. When you're saying competition, competition because they're filled with animals? Just there's so many animals out there for adoption. Gotcha. So you have two dogs in the shelter right now? We do have two dogs in the shelter right now. I don't have any additional questions for you. It looks like things are are going well. I'm glad to see that your um, the number of animals that you have in in the shelter have gone down. Recognizing that that will probably go up again, but really just shows the effort that you all have been doing to get them adopted, particularly during this pandemic and the challenges that you've had over the last year um, and stuff to to do that in this past quarter. So. Congratulations for your continued efforts. Yeah, and congratulations getting that, that bonded pair of cats adopted. You, thank you very much. Yeah, that sometimes those are harder than the others. Wow. All right, do you have anything else to add, Anna? I don't at this time. All right, well, thank you very much. Thank Enjoy you. the rest of your day. Okay, moving on. We don't have any other reports or upcoming agenda items. We'll move on to public forum number two, comments from the public on items not on this agenda. The board may not take any action on the comments due to the requirements of the open meeting law, but may do so in the future. Is there anyone who'd like to make public comment? I am not seeing anyone, so we'll close public forum number two. Next up, liaison assignments, committee meetings, updates, and announcements. Supervisor Basil, you have any updates? Um, oh, we, did we skip upcoming agenda items? I did, sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. You can add it here if you have something. Oh, yeah, I just wanted to make sure um, that uh, I brought up, um, I'm not sure when exactly I'm going to start talking more about climate action, but I just wanted to get that out, um, that I would like us to start talking more actively about climate action and maybe how we can be working with other communities, um, somehow working with the city of Ames um, to make sure that we're having those conversations also. Okay. Anything else from your, that you wanted to add? Uh, not, not right there. Um, 
Do you want to talk about liaison science? Sure. Sure. Um, this this week I've got um, collective impact summit that uh, training that I'm a virtual training that I'm attending through United Way and um, Scan. And then we, we also have the High Performance Leadership Academy through NACO. Um, Wednesday, there's the city assessor candidate presentations. Um, that's about all I have as far as on my calendar. Um, I did also want to uh, just put in a plug for the United Ways Live United food drive that's going on um, through the 6th of May. And they're doing kind of a mix of hybrid and um, regular food drive. So there are drop sites. Um, and they have a list of items that are needed on their website. Um, I know they're pushing it out on their Facebook, trying to get the word out. That's all I have. Um, I have a couple of things. So I will probably be over in Ames all day tomorrow with the city assessor. Um, Thursday, we've got our NACO small group meeting. Um, there is going to be a Board of Health special meeting Thursday night at 5.30. Uh, Friday, again, I have the NACO, another NACO meeting. I also have the um, workforce um, uh, meeting, leadership meeting at noon, and then I have a ISAP meeting at 2. Um, and then Monday, I'll just go ahead uh, on it. Um, I have a separate, it's a, I believe the public health class um, uh, meeting that night at 6 p.m. So that's just kind of a little bit of my updates there. Anything else? No. Move to adjourn. I move we adjourn. Second. Stay home. Aye. Seven. Aye. We are adjourned.